In this video, I'll show you how to make synth wave basses that sound like this right here. Using Tone 2 Electra, this plugin that's in front of us. So real quick, if you do not want to make this preset and you like it and you want to use it, of course, the link will be in the description box for Astronaut XP. I will have a preview video a little later today. So, you know, check this out just in case I have demos just in case you want to hear like full tracks or whatnot and you want to hear that full track or whatnot. From the beginning here, I just want to point out a few things about this particular preset. Now, it is made with the wavetable option in Tone 2 Electra, which is a fantastic option to use. And also it is a triangle saw. Um, right now it is in saw mode. If you look at the pulse width, if you, you can adjust the pulse width and you can select the triangle and saw much like how it would be in like serum or something like that. Uh, mind you that this was out before serum. There's other nuances to this sound here. Uh, I do recommend that if you are to make a bass that you use a saw waveform because the saw waveform has a lot of harmonics to work with. Now to begin, let's go ahead and select initial and reset all. Now we just have a plain bass or a plain saw. Uh, with that, I just want to show you right now that, you know, you can turn on the other oscillator so it can be extra loud. One of the other things about that particular preset is that it uses a little bit of FM synthesis that is modulated. Now, frequency modulation will make the waveforms that are in the middle one a carrier and one a modulator or one a main sound and one being modulated by the other waveform. That's how FM synthesis works. But let's hear it. Uh, the other thing here uh, that you want to add in this module right here is cutoff. And I did use the, the low pass Moog filter. So it can be a little smoother than usual. It's like about a 24 dB filter uh, made by Moog. I said Moog probably. Another thing, resonance. I use resonance in this. And now you can start hearing some of the nuances of the sound come together here. Another thing, we want to go over here to the envelope and we're going to dial down the sustain. So when we add something like the arpeggiator, which it did have a arpeggiation to it, uh, we're going to go ahead and just turn on, turn it on and go to just up. And then we're going to go to 2 BPM. Then we're going to adjust the decay. So we're like halfway there. It's nice and beefy. But there are some other things that I, I want to show you. Uh, this particular patch is kind of complex, but it's not if that makes any sense. Uh, but what I'm gonna do is, instead of using the LFOs over here, I'm gonna show you something right here that uh, Oceanview showed me, which there's extra waveform, well, there's extra LFOs within the mod matrix. So we're gonna go ahead and turn on the sine wave, uh, the 2.8 hertz. We're going to uh, have it modulate the frequency modulation two knob, which is right here. So if you do pay attention to how everything is laid out in here, you'll see the oscillator one, oscillator two, oscillator three. This oscillator module is every has everything that you're going to use in it. And if you move over here to like the cutoff one and two and resonance and all that, that's over there in the filter section. So every section is kind of is laid out like in a nice order here. Hopefully I didn't miss, uh, <laughs> confuse anybody. Now, as I dial in the amount here, you can start hearing that it's starting to sound like it's original uh, process here. But it's one one issue that uh, as I press and play like a chord progression, it's going up together like it's starting to pitch it. Now, I don't really need that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to this middle module over here where I can select the amount of voices that I want to use. I want to use one voice. Uh, 
that's just how I like to use my bases or whatnot. Uh, I do want this base to thump, so there's another option over here that's over overlooked. I, when I look at other people's uh, preset patches and stuff like that, they just usually have it on dynamic loud or linear sound. Dynamic bass, you'll notice a difference. And we're going to go ahead and make this analog heavy um, because, you know, why not? But be be careful because if you don't have enough RAM, this particular options right here could uh, make your computer buffer or over buffer. So I'm going to use high quality anyways. Anyway, so what we have here, I'm going to go and I'm going to use an LFO. I'm going to use a different kind of LFO. I'm going to use plus. And I'm going to use plus and I'm going to go to my first LFO and I'm going to trim it down a little bit. And the next thing I'm going to find something to modulate and I'm going to modulate the resonance. I'm going to play with that. The next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to add some compression and I'm not going to even do anything to the compressor in there because I just wanted all the bass to be like even and Steven. So all right, now that we have that, I'm going to go and add another uh, modulation. This time I am going to add uh, velocity and volume, you know, just in case, you know, you want to play the bass a lighter or heavier in certain parts, you can have that option. And just for kicks and giggles, I'm going to polish off this bass with a little reverb. You can choose whatever reverb you that, that you know you like, but I'm going to go ahead and use reverb hall and I'm going to turn down the mix to give the bass a little bit more presence than usual. You got to be careful though. If you do dial up the reverb that you have, it will cause a little bit of overlapping and then also it will kind of sound very nasty in your mix. You. So, just a little bit of reverb. So, with that, that's all I'm going to do to it basically. So, let's hear it. How does it sound? Please give me feedback. Of course, leave a comment below. I will respond to as many as I can. Hopefully, this video was helpful to you guys.